Good evening, people. Brian Arv here, and um, just a bit of an update on the uh, Levi Belfield scenario. Uh, I noticed in the uh, press today, hello, how are you? Um, if I just go over to it, uh, just get a sand test here because I can't see your comments at the minute. But Nick, can you hear me coming through yet against, against the music? All oh, right, should be on YouTube. Uh, okay, let me just have a look. Ah, um, Twitter's not connected. Let me just reconnect Twitter. Sorry about this, people. Send in data to Twitter. If you just tuned in on Twitter, we're online now. Live on Twitter, BHTV Plus. Oh, hang on, Twitter's unable to, uh, send in data, unable to connect, hang on, send in data again, online it says. Right, so Twitter is live, bhtv.uk, send in data again, unable to connect. There's a problem connecting to Twitter. Yeah, keep saying unable to connect from my end. Send in data, keep stopping and starting. So... Yeah, whether that's going to stay on or not, I don't know. It, 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 YouTube, all right, listen, I'm going to cut Twitter. So if there's anyone out there and they're watching on Twitter, please come over to BHTV Plus or the uh, BHTV uh, Plus Facebook group, because uh, uh, Facebook group, because this Twitter thing's not happening. All right, so let's let's move on. So uh, today in the news, I, I suppose most of you have, have probably seen and heard, this man's come up again, Levi Belfield. And uh, one of the stories today in the Daily Mail is uh, Levi Belfield's ex regrets not reporting him sooner. And that's gone in the Daily Mail. Now we all know who's been working for the Daily Mail, don't we? Robert Kellaway, James Fielding. And for those of you that don't know, Robert Kellaway is one of the men that hacked me. He worked at the News of the World and also hacked Millie Dowler, but has denied any knowledge of phone hacking. Um, and the other guy, James Fielding, that I mentioned, is the man responsible for stories such as the Baby P story with regards to John Wedger being involved and also the, the infamous Andrew Ash Express interview. Um, he's worked for the Express, along with Robert Kellaway, I might add. The both of them have worked at the Express, and a pair of them are now doing work for the Daily Mail. So when I see Levi Belfield coming up in the Daily Mail article, and he's all over the news, because he's now apparently admitted to um, some murders that someone else has been blamed for. And uh, let me just go to some of them stories here. Some of the, some of the headlines are Levi Belfield confesses to Lynn and Megan Russell murders, lawyer says. Uh, Levi Belfield, serial killer, may have committed more murders, says ex-Met police. And um, just to give you a bit of background on this... Uh, now, let me take you into Levi Belford Wikipedia just to give you a little bit of background on what is being put out on this guy. But I'm now doubting everything, absolutely everything, and I will let you know why. Levi Belfield, born Levi Rabbits, 17th of May 1968. That is also going to become very relevant also. His date of birth there, right? Remember, we, we said that, 1968. Is an English serial killer and sex offender. He was found guilty on the 25th of February 2008 of the murders of Marsha McDonnell and Amelie de la Grange and the attempted murder of Kate Sheedy and sentenced to life imprisonment on the 23rd of June 2011. Belfield was further found guilty of the murder of Millie Dalla. 
On both occasions, the judge imposed a whole life order, meaning that Belfield will serve the sentence without the possibility of parole. To date, he's the only offender to have received such a sentence on two separate occasions. OK, so that's a little bit of background there on Levi Belfield. I'm pretty sure most of you have heard of who he is anyway. So he's back in the news today, admitting to some murders that another guy has been in prison for, for 20 odd years. And uh, if we look at this story here, this is from kentonline.co.uk. So let's just have a look at this. Sister says... Sister says Levi Belfield confession proves Michael Stone did not kill Lynn and Megan Russell in Chillingdon. So this guy, Michael Stone, has uh, been in prison uh, for, uh, it, it's looking like, for the wrongful murders of this woman, her daughter and her dog. And uh, all three of them were, were killed um, one morning or afternoon walking the dog or something like that. Uh, 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 the sister of the man convicted of the brutal murders of Lynn and Megan Russell says she believes Levi Belfield's astonishing confession is absolutely true. Barbara Stone is convinced the serial killer's admission he attacked the mother and her six-year-old daughter in Chillenden in 1996 will finally prove her, Michael, her brother Michael did not do it. The 61-year-old Gillingham resident who is serving life for the savage murders which rocked the nation and has always professed his innocence. Miss Stone, who has campaigned tirelessly for his freedom, said, This is not just Belfield chinwagging. Nobody is going to come out with a statement like that over such a terrible crime. Uh, I believe that Belfield for a long time... I, I have believed Belfield for a long time, but never thought he would have the guts... To, I'm cutting out. My, microphone's cutting out. All right, give me two seconds, people. Uh, uh, looks like we're getting a bit of lag. All right, let me just go in back in. All right, I'll bring that up a little bit. We are getting some lag here, people. Just give us a second. We're going to try and sort this. Give it a sec, then it should fix up. Just give it a sec. Just give it a sec. I'll bring that down to 5,000. Right, has that got... Have we got it's, any yeah, better? I can hear you now, but it's going back to when I said about the background. It was literally five seconds, now it's like 30 seconds. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, people, we're just trying to sort out these, these little background issues. Seems all right, but like I say, you're quite behind. I don't know if that really affects it, but you're quite behind. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry on. Yeah. O hopefully, we're, we're all right. So, um, Levi Belfield, in short, has now admitted, allegedly, so we're hearing across all the news, to uh, the murders of these um, two women and their dog, apparently. A, a woman, a daughter, and, the, and their dog. Um, and I don't know how he's admitted it. I heard that he's sh shattered it down some pipe work in between prisons, uh, and, and they've taken that. Now, I don't get that. I, I, I really don't get that. There's something really wrong with this. I mean, why... I mean, is Levi Belfield, was he due to be released? I mean, it's been some time that he's been in. Um, that's nothing like two, three life sentences, whatever he was given. Um, but if he was due for release, it, it now looks like at the last minute, a bit like what they've done to Sidney Cook, really, at the last minute, we're now going to try and keep him in prison. But there's some strange things going on around Levi Belfield and certain companies that he had. And also, this girlfriend of his, who is um, online at the minute, 
and the story's doing the rounds, um, I will find it for you. Uh, yeah, my years of hell. So there's this woman here, right? And she's on Loose Women. Uh, where is it? And this is what's in the mail. He told me he'd raped a disabled girl in a car bonnet. I'm as guilty as he is. Former girlfriend of Millie Dale, killer, Levi Belfield, says she still blames herself for not reporting him. Right. Levi Belfield's former partner. Levi Belfield, born in 1968. Right. So Levi Belfield's former partner made an emotional appearance on Loose Women. We're going to have a look at a bit of that in a minute. Joanna... Collings, they spelt her name wrong now, revealed she suffered daily beatings at the hands of the killer and she revealed her guilt that she did not report Belfield to the police sooner. He once bragged to Miss Collins that he'd raped a disabled woman on a car bonnet. Now, I don't know why, but do you remember Joanne Magellics? who was the supposed girlfriend of the Lost Prophet singer, Ian Watkins. Well, this stinks like that one does, yeah? The ex-girlfriend of so-called paedophilic abusing guy. It's the same shit here, yeah? And, and I'm suggesting that there's something not right with any of this. And, and the fact that the media haven't gone in and looked into these people properly. I find it astonishing that I'm finding stuff that they should have been reporting years ago. But you've got to come to me in order to find out something real. And you'll see why in a minute. So, Levi Belfield's former partner revealed the evil killer bragged he had raped a disabled girl on a car bonnet and said she blames herself for not reporting him sooner. During an emotional appearance on Loose Women Today, Joanna Collings spoke about meeting Millie Dale's murderer when she was 24 and he was working as a doorman. The pair had two children together, but Belfield suspected Miss Collings to horrific abuse and one time slapped her while she was pregnant. Right, well, is that interview now? Right, is that interview. And this is Joanna Collings. So what we'll do is we'll have a little look at a bit of that interview, right? Uh, there's a little bit here on YouTube. It's three minutes thirty-six long, so hopefully we we should be all, we should be all right with this. Yeah. So let's let's play a bit of this, and hopefully you can hear this. Just take us back a little bit. You know, you met him when you were only twenty-four. Is that right? I had met him like previously when we used to go to a different club. Right. Um, but actually, had re-met him when I was around that age. So you yeah. started a relationship. Yeah. What, what was he like? 24. Off, he was an absolute angel. You couldn't have asked for a nicer, nicer person. You know, always bought you flowers, always, you know, really nice, took you to nice places. He and had he, a bit of a reputation, though, as a bad boy. Oh, and, yeah. And a woman yeah. Eyes, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, big did time. He, did he work, he worked at a nightclub, didn't <laughs> he? Yeah. Yes. But yeah, he was a doorman. There was nothing there that made you think, oh, no. It, no, not like really. I mean, I mean... Like, if you look at the pictures of him now to when I was with him, he doesn't even look like the same person. He was actually quite a good-looking man in them days. Yeah. yeah. But so what changed what? then? When did you first start um, noticing the changes in him? Probably about three months after I started seeing him. Mm. Was, we had... I can't even remember what the argument was about. Something trivial. And he slapped me. And you actually, when you first get the first slap, you think, you know, I oh, know that's not happening, you've got to go. But they you know, how sorry he is and he didn't mean it and he'd never also, felt this way. Sorry to interrupt, but you were, you were pregnant already yeah. at this time, weren't you? At this yeah, point? I'd I'm fallen pregnant months. almost straight away. But, um, and so, yeah, you actually do believe them when they say that, you know, they're really sorry and you think, you know, it will never, ha it will never happen again. And then when it does happen again, you're so involved and you've already become part of that. Mm. Puzzle in the bubble. You can't. There's and no. You've got there a baby is no. On the yeah. way. And I believe that he had children, uh, previous yeah. children, and he was a good father. He was a very good dad. Very good dad. Yeah. That's the sad part. So that abuse got worse and worse, didn't it? Yeah. To, to yeah. what sort of level? And of course, there's young kids watching, so we have to be careful. But... Um, 
daily beatings, burnt me cigarettes, um, rapes, all sorts of things. Why did you stay drunk? It's the old cliche, you know, you, you do say to people, why, why were you there, why did you stay? But when you're in such an abusive relationship, they actually like, mould your mind to that he can convince you that you would had an affair and you hadn't even left the house. Were you scared yeah. to leave? Terrified. You fought every day for your life. And he was doing all these things to you whilst you were pregnant, is that is Yeah. That right? I just can't even imagine it. And, and at, at this point, so you're in a, an abusive relationship and I completely understand what you're saying. It's not easy mm. to even think about leaving, let alone t to find the courage to leave. What was it that sort of made you feel differently towards him? You know, when did that turning point happen where you stopped taking the abuse and thought, this is wrong? Um, I was pregnant with my second child, my son, and Levi had already moved on to his next partner and my daughter had been ill and the hospital said she can come home but you have to keep a fan on her to keep her cool. So the temperature, yeah. Yeah, so that's not a problem. Yeah. So Levi had come round with said person demanding a fan and I was, no, you know, and I, just, I kept him in contact, you know, about what was happening with my daughter and he was like, no, 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 I want the fan, I want the fan. And I was like, you can't, you know, you're actually going to take it away from your daughter. It was not well, yeah. Yeah, and it just almost, like, just that, that's when, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like, you know, and we had an almighty fight on my doorstep. And I... I'm not being funny, but the worst I've heard so far is he's taken a fan when someone else was hot and that he slapped her, not that that's right at all, when she's pregnant, but this is supposed to be rapist, killer, murderer. And these are the worst stories that are coming out. Anyway, that's, 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 that's not a, a major point, but it's just what's going through my head at the minute. I said I was actually pregnant with his son at the time, and afterwards, <coughs> the switch had just gone up, and yeah. I thought, no, I'm not doing this but anymore. My picture as wall decorations. <coughs> right, so I just wanted to confirm at this point that that woman is... Uh, well, let's get on to it. Joanna Sasha Collings. And when you do some checking, here's what you find. 001 International Moving Services Limited. I didn't hear anything about any companies on Loose Women there, did you? I just heard about cigarettes getting put out and all of this stuff. I didn't hear anything about I was forced into, you know, being a secretary on, on companies. So let's have a look at this. 001 International Moving Services Limited. Two directors. There's the company number. Dissolved. Company is now dissolved. So it's, 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 not, it's not active anymore. So let's have a look at it. Company name. International 001 International Moving Services Limited. Company is dissolved. It was incorporated on the 1st of January 1970. Who's on the company? Miss Joanna Sasha Collings, company secretary, and Mr. Levi Belfield. No mention of any of that in the media. Most of these media outlets at the minute are not even mentioning this woman's name. So we are talking about the right person and they were in a company together called 001 International Moving Services Limited. And it was incorporated when Levi Belfield was two. You, let's go back. Levi Belfield. Let's go to Born 17th of May 1968. Right? And now let's go back to International Moving Services Limited Incorporated 1st of January 1970. Well, he has got to be the first ever two-year-old I've ever heard of 
number one, having a limited company, and um, not only a limited company, but it's international moving services. So you've got a two-year-old baby, you know, with a courier service, global one. That don't seem a bit strange to you. It's funny how the media ain't picked up on none of it, isn't it? And uh, we are talking about the same people. Miss Joanna Sasha Collins. Date of birth, July 1971. Appointed Company Secretary of 001 International Moving Services Limited on the 16th of February 1996. And it don't look like she ever resigned either. And uh, it doesn't look like he ever resigned either. As director on a company incorporated in 1970 and Belfield too at that point. Don't, don't seem strange to you now. It's not a little bit weird. I might have a little bit of a point, you think, no? That's not weird. I'll tell you what's even weirder is when we look at the other director because his, his, his so-called missus, who I believe is no different to, um, what's her name? The Lost Prophets missus. Again, Joanne Magellix, this, this, this is the same shit again. And Levi Belfield was not some lone, lone wolf in all of this either. Not when you're the director of a company called International Moving Services Limited at the age of two, incorporated 1st of January 1970. I mean, he may have come on as director later on, but there's no information saying that. All right, okay, okay, all right, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's read this right. Both directors have been appointed on the 14th of Feb 1996. Were there previous directors to this company? Were there? There must have been, maybe this company's... Right, so, so what's this telling us? That this company has been running since 1970 and the latest directors in this company have been appointed on these dates. Right? So this company's been running since 1970. Right? But Levi Belfield... This company's been running as long as Levi Belfield's been too. So whoever these people are that he's working with, he's known them all of his life. The other director on the company, JP Called Limited, appointed two days earlier. Resigned on the same day. What? JP Called Limited, director, appointed director, 14th of February 1996. Resigned, 14th of February 1996. Not strange? Not strange at all. Fuck me. Right, JP Cold Limited. Let's go into this director. That's where we're going. Get rid of this out of the way. JP Cold Limited. Director, come on. Right, it doesn't wanna doesn't wanna do it. Let me refresh this page and see if this might help. Director, JP Cold Limited. Right, just give this a second. I think it's just taking a minute to load up. That's all it is. So I'll just give that a second. JP Cold Limited. Resigned directorships, 3,142. I'm not surprised at the rate that you fucking resign from companies the same day. How many times? Well, here's how many times he's done it, whoever they are. Director details, JP Cold Limited. Since when has a limited company been allowed to be a director of a company? How long's that been allowed? So let's have a look at some of the companies. The co-director of Moving Services Limited with Levi Belfield. Let's see what companies they're involved in. Over 3,000 of them. Still got a couple hundred of them running. Right, so this this company's based in London, SE16. Direct marketing, 
Direct Marketing Incentives and Premiums Limited, Opus Europe Limited, Blaby, looks like baby from here, Black maybe it is, Blaby Electrical Limited, Luther Pendragon Limited, Crabbit Park Livery Services. Oh, where have we heard that word before, Paddock? Livery. Birmingham Anglin. Islamic Art Consultants Limited in 93. Didn't uh, Belfield convert to Islam whilst in prison? There's a lot of the Jubilee Locomotive Company Limited. Jubilee. That's got a bit to do with Jubilee Sports Limited. Roxon Homes. Energy Club, <coughs> Talent Hire Limited. These are all people that have got some some sort of. Well, you got a link to Belfield through this company, so you can't fucking deny it. World Villages for Children. Ah, uh, there we go. Let's have a look at that then, shall we? World Villages for Children. Well, if I was the media, I'd be looking at what? Oh, I don't like that straight away. Talent Hire Limited. Anglin Centre. Stable. Wait, I mean, you know, you must. Net Climax Limited. Company check. What's going on there? What's happened there? What's happened there? I'm going to go back one. I don't know what happened there. J so JP called Limited. Right? I don't know what happened there. Right, so we are talking about the right people. And you don't think that's strange? Millie Dalla. What's the real story behind all of this? I've got a theory, right? I've got a theory. When I, when I put it all together, there's child prostitution at the heart of the whole of this story, right? And, and it's, a, it's a difficult one to follow. But it goes something like this. In 2002, March 21st, Millie Dalla goes missing, right? According to Glenn Mulcair, who actually hacked her, who I've had in my house and recorded him, he said that Neville Felbeck from the News of the World got Millie's number from Surrey Police on the day she went missing, and that was the 21st of March 2002. Glenn Mulcair claims then that he receives Millie Dale's mobile number, right, from Neville Felbeck, Chief Reporter, News of the World, who's also on my evidence, Neville, top left, second of the fifth, O2, with that note underneath it, um, that he gave Glenn Millie's number on the 10th of the next month, which is April, 10th of April. So Neville Felbeck's had a go at it himself for the first couple of weeks. This is where you get the whole problem story with, oh, um, the message, you know, to the, um, on the voicemail from some job that, that they're saying was it, that's all bollocks. That, that has got something to, never, something to do with Neville Felbeck, all that part, right? Glenn Mulcair officially on record, I've got him recorded, you know, he could be lying, but he says he gets Millie Dalla's number on the 10th, right? So he's hacking her on the 10th. 
Glenn Mulcair starts hacking me April, same month as Millie, basically. We're like 10 days, 12 days apart. But he starts hacking me and her in the same month. Now, the other people that were setting me up that were out in the field was a guy called Robert Kellaway. And Robert Kellaway, you've seen this guy before, right? Robert Kellaway is this guy. Uh, let me just uh, make that bigger. This is Robert Kellaway. This is the man that hacked me. He was behind the whole sting operation with the news of the world. And uh, he's hacked Millie Daler as well, I'm telling you. But in the hacking inquiry in 2013, he denied any knowledge of phone hacking or knowing anything with Millie Daler as well. Right, he's denied it. He's, he's denied that he knew about any phone hacking. Right, well, he's a liar because I've got him phone hacking me and I can prove that without any shadow of a doubt and have done that for many years. So he was hacking me and they were phone tapping me. And the news editor, Greg Miskill, who was at the News of the World at the time, has admitted that Millie was phone tapped. Got him on tape, you've all heard it. So Millie was being phone tapped. Why was Millie being phone tapped? And even more to the point, why was Millie being phone tapped? But this guy here is denying any knowledge of anything, even phone hacking. I, I have no knowledge. But when he went into the court, or wherever it was they done that, and he denied any knowledge, I just got his police witness statement to do with my case that my solicitor had been hiding from me. And he's all over that evidence, admitting, recording me, recording my phone conversations, right? So he's a liar. So he was hacking me, and as he was doing it to me in April 2002, he was doing it to Millie Daler in April 2002, but he's trying to deny it. But he can't deny it, because I've got him on paper doing it to me. Undeniable slam dunk. You can't, it can't be denied, just absolutely fucking can't, right? So he was hacking Millie. But why are you denying hacking Millie? Your news editor has admitted it. She was phone tapping. There's a difference between phone tapping and phone hacking. Phone hacking is listening to the, the uh, people's voicemail messages. Phone tapping is listening to live conversations as a third party, intercepting and recording and listening. That's phone tapping. They were doing that. Greg Miskill was admitted it, the news editor, at the time of my hacking and Millie Daler's hacking, all coming from the news of the world, and this is coming from the news editor. And this man here on the screen, Robert Kellaway, is bylined on the story, the Millie Daler story, that was supposedly bought down the news of the world. But then when they show you it later on, his name's not on it. And a woman's name called Sarah Arnold is on now. So now why are they trying to distance Kellaway from this story? Well, my theory goes like this. Millie goes missing because the story's deeper than what we're being told. She was being prostituted, mate. Yeah, child prostitution ring. That's what was going on. And I believe her dad, who's not really her dad, He's a dad to the other one, but he ain't her dad. He knows all about it, I, I suspect. And I believe he knows Belfield. And Belfield, well, he, do, he clearly don't act alone, does he? Because look at the fucking company. Let's go back to it. Let's go back to the company. Yeah, let's go back to the company. Just make sure you're remembering this. Yeah, as, as we're going through it, the company with JP Cold Limited. Yeah, let's add 3,000 and odd companies, and you see some of them. Yeah, don't forget that. So Robert Kellaway has lied, and I've caught him. And Robert Kellaway had a partner working with him, and that guy was called Comrade Brand, and he's a covert recording, videotaping man for the news of the world, and he was working with Robert Kellaway. But Comrade Brand only works with his partner and his partner is the fake sheikh. And, he, and, and, and the fake sheikh, whose name is Mazen Mahmood, works with Conrad Brown on everything. They're never apart. It doesn't happen. It's well known. So wherever, Maz, wherever Conrad is, Mazer is. Mazen Mahmood, the fake sheikh. 
So the fake Sheikh was hacking me, and he was hacking Millie Dala, but they've kept his name out of it, right? So why would they try and keep Kellaway's name out of everything? Because he's working with Conrad. If he's working with Conrad, he's working with a fake Sheikh. Well, why are Conrad and the fake Sheikh involved? Well, they like investigating paedophilia, don't they? But I believe they've been given a job to do. And that was, was to surveil Levi Belfield and Millie Dalla, tap her phone. I go back to the news editor saying uh, her phone was uh, uh, tapped. Why are you tapping a 13 year old girl school, school girl's phone? Well, she was in a prostitution ring and um, Levi Belfield was probably running that part of the ring. And I believe that a couple of members or more from Surrey Police were actually going round and fucking girls in Levi Belfield's flat or wherever that he was supplying to them, underage girls, even people in the police. And uh, I believe there was some form of blackmail going on and uh, maybe Belfield got above his station and then the police want to watch what Belfield's up to because they're worried now. So they need to watch Belfield, but they can't do it through their official channels. They can't phone tap him, so they get their mates to do it at the News of the World. So the News of the World do it. And we've all heard about the News of the World being complicit with the old Bill and that, well, this is true. And we know that's true now. And these are the reasons why. So I believe that Conrad Brown, the fake Sheikh and Robert Kellaway were, at the same time they were phone tapping me, they was using all their equipment, weren't they? What they were using on that, and fucking started using it on me as well. Um, clearly. Uh, and then for them to lie about it and say, no, we ain't got done what you're talking about. Well, you fucking do know what I'm talking about. And you were surveilling Millie Dalla because you knew she was being prostituted. And it wouldn't be the first time that Maz Mahmood and Conrad had got involved in investigating paedophilia. They investigated Jonathan King. Yeah, with his supplying underage girls to VIP perverts, if you remember. Right? So, I find it very hard to believe that they weren't investigating this. Or if they're not investigating it, they're tapping and keeping an eye on Belfield because he's maybe trying to blackmail a couple of old Bill now. So, they give him a wide berth in relation to all of these other murders, the Dillagrange and, and, and Millie and everyone else. They give him a wide berth for about eight years. Why? Why do they do that? And, and when the girl goes missing, you notice it's just when the CCTV on the police station is facing the wall for a few seconds. This is a complete inside job, this whole thing. And the police, I believe, got the news of the world to monitor Millie Dalla and Belfield for those purposes. Not for the purposes that you've been told. And, um, Something went wrong. Um, they've tried to cover it up as best as. Mark Lewis, you know, representing the Dallas, he's dodgy. Richard Mallet, my ex solicitor, he's dodgy, got done for fraud. I know he's trying to appeal it, but he is because he ain't, look, he's done to my fucking case. Um, you know, the fact that he also turns up in Andrew Ash's list as an abuser is an absolute fucking joke. I mean, so insulted. My intelligence is, is so insulted over that one, I tell you. Um, but I believe the news of the world were monitoring Millie Dale up for the police and that is why the police let um, the news of the world uh, destroy laptops and evidence. You know, the ginger bird, what's her name again? Rebecca Brooks, they caught her destroying evidence. She wasn't done for perverting the course of justice. They let her do it. You'd only let her do it if you had an interest in letting her do it and they needed to close down that newspaper. And they closed down the newspaper. They needed a reason to close down that newspaper. Well, they got it now, haven't they? Because if you started investigating and you really saw the collusion between the police and the news of the world, maybe certain protocol would have dictated that, you know, there's, there's gonna be certain investigations and bits that they can't control. So they control it themselves and bring down the newspaper. And we know it was controlled because the week that they go to press with the News of the World phone hacking scandal, the very day it hits the press, that day is the date registered for the Sun on Sunday. 
So they fucking knew that they was going to bring out the sun on Sunday and get rid of the news of the world. And this gave them the reason to do it. Yeah. But the real reason is the prostitution ring. And you, them making you believe that people like Levi Belfield work alone. Yeah. And that it, and that it was just him. It's not just him. Yeah. It's not just him. And Miss Joanna Collins, I mean, hopefully, you know, I'd, I'd like to believe she's telling the truth. But when I see this, someone needs to do a bit of explaining, man, please. Yeah, Levi Belfield, director. Six, Strawberry Hill, Twickenham, Middlesex. One of the girls is killed in Twickenham. So I know we're talking about the right person. But there is a bit of me that says, hang on a minute, look what happened with Andrew Ash. How do you know any of this is not real? Or real? Or a smoke screen for something else? Something's not right here. Then parents don't act right. The daughter's not acting right. She's smiling while they're talking about her sister's death when, when she's promoting the book. She's standing there in a black and white checkerboard fucking jacket during the trial. There's all 33 symbols coming up and that. It's just like Masonic. The old man looks like a mason and, and not a tear in his eye. And then all this trying to make it believable, stretch it out over time. Oh, the old man was found with porn magazines and all that. It's like, nah, that's you lot make, trying to make something look genuine. This is how you go about doing it. Yeah, you make it happen over a 10 year period. There are things online now, right? That this, that this woman is saying that come out 10 years ago. You know, when you see, you can see the age of a video, been out 10 years, one of the videos on YouTube. It's like, why they, why now? Why now? This, uh, Belfield, Strawberry Hill, Twickenham, Middlesex. Date of birth, 1968. Companies. Here's more. International Moving Services Limited. Incorporated in 1970. With Miss Joanna Sasha Collins. Twickenham. Yeah, and this is her on here. This is Joanna Sasha Collins. This is her. Why aren't you asking her about that? Why aren't you asking her about that? I'll leave it there, people. More on this to come, yeah? See you soon.